Hello there guys, uh, this is the Deafness article for Grand School, and today we're making a 50NL Zoom hand review video. The video may be split into two parts, it might, it might be one, I'm not sure, it depends how long it goes on for. Either way, I have 15, 16, 17 hands, and hopefully we'll get through all of them within a maximum of two parts. Um, there is no real focus. I know. I know personally this. I get a little bit bored with with hand review videos that focus exclusively on one concept, although they're often pretty useful. Um, but this will generally be um, another video trying to explain um, some important concepts and some general philosophies. So, as you can see, um, the first hand we have. Queen's in a small blind, it folds to the button, who makes an, an unusually large raise, but um, given his hood stats, he seems to be um, re reasonably competent. Uh, so, I think not 3-betting this would, be, would essentially be a sin. He, he might have some breed which says that the big blind is, is a weak player, um, or something. So, I, w I wouldn't read too much into the sizing. So, we 3-bet, and the 3-bet sizing is somewhat bigger than 3x. Normally, I'd make it one big blind, being bigger than 3x, roughly. Um, but I've made it slightly bigger here, because we're deep. Uh, hold on, 450. Yeah, I, I think it's a tiny bit bigger than that. Um, I should have made it a little bit bigger still, to be honest. Um, given precisely how deep the stacks are, uh, we're just over 300 big blinds deep. Um, I think, roughly... 650 to 7 would be probably 650 is, is loosely optimal against this size open outer position. So the big blind folds and the button calls. Now, the button's calling range we expect to be extremely wide this deep. He has very little incentive to fold much of what he opened that's playable with these positions, and he might be opening a tighter range than normal. Um, with the fish in a big blind, or he might be opening a looser range. People would adjust differently. Personally, I feel that he should probably be opening a slightly looser range, um, because he's going to be able to exploit the fish very well post-flop, and many people aren't going to properly adjust to spots where uh, people should be opening looser ranges at normal at 50 and up. So we see a flop, which is king ten seven two tone. We flop a backdoor flush draw, some backdoor straight draws, but more, most importantly, we flop a second pair. And this this flop is a pretty standard check. Um, against a weak player, we could consider c betting because there are so many draws which can call. Uh, but ultimately, against stronger players, if we do c bet this, we have the issue that our checking range becomes extremely weak. And if well, it, it's even if this is t even if this is is the top of our checking range, we are going to struggle against people who fire multiple barrels because they can because if villain realizes that this is the top of our checking range in any spot, then he can bet like eighteen on a flop with king x, uh, thirty on his turn, fifty on his turn, whatever. And but what whatever gets stacked in by the river, um, it's probably like fifteen forty shove or something. But yeah, so we check and he and he checks back. Um, we expect him to rarely check back King X. He could check back some weak King X, like King Four Suited. If he has it pre, which he might do, um, he could check back. I think he rarely checks back flush draws. Maybe he checks back Ace Queen of Hearts, Ace Jack of Hearts, Ace Ten of Hearts, which are also the flush draws that I'd recommend checking on the flop. The reason we should probably be checking some flush draws on a flop here is so that. Our range doesn't become inordinately weak on flushing turns. Uh, so, and 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 also especially with these flush draws, we should always get to get any immediate value from anything. Um, but yeah, if if we do have this range on turns which is capped, at, well, I suppose, I suppose it, if if it's capped at middle set, it's not too big a deal because there aren't going to be that many um, combos which beat us. Although, um, especially, uh, I'm sorry, especially considering the, the King of Hearts blocker is on is is on the board. Um, but in general, I'd be wary about spots about betting all of your draws in any spot because, again, in certain situations, your range becomes uh, explos um, explosively weak, and, and obviously so. 
Uh, the the same six of hearts. Um, as we mentioned, we expect both players to be to be betting most flush draws in their in their respective positions on the flop. I expect us to have a few more flush draws in, than than villain. Um, have a few more flushes than villain, uh, especially not flushes. I expect villains who often bet ace queen of hearts, ace jack of hearts on the flop. The reason being that our range looks decidedly caps um, when when we do check the flop. Although we do we do have top set, that's what three combos, and um, he plays those more effectively with bets. I I guess he has ace ten of hearts, and but I definitely expect him to also be betting uh, like ace two of hearts or ace five of hearts. Um, However, I think when he checks back the flop, this is still this is still probably a bet. Uh, he he has a few kings, not not that many, but he also has some tens, plenty of draws at this stage. He can have he can have lots of stuff with the naked ace of hearts, which he can elect to play by calling or raising on his own. Um, nine eight got there, although that's not a huge part of his range given he checks checks the flop. I I struggle to get, allocate more than three four combos of that, um, and he probably has. He probably has some uh, some ace queen ace jack. He he checks a flop with which although they're not particularly strong draws, and he prob and he possibly folds them to his own bet. Possibly not. Probably not. In fact, um, even if he does fold them, we have the we have the bonus of folding out a lot a lot of equity against us, which is never a bad thing. So I think it's a fairly clear value bet against ten x seven x jacks queens. Um, a, a lot of people at at Zuma aren't going to four bet queens this deep. Um, personally, I, th I think we should probably be four betting them and fasting a five bet, uh, but it's close. So yeah, we we bet seven. Um, the sizing seems fairly reasonable. Uh, it's it's because our our range isn't inordin inordinately weak or inordin or inordinately strong. Um, he has plenty of ten x, which which he needs to call with. But also, we force him to call possibly a bit wider than he's comfortable with. Uh, if he, if he wants to remain unexplosable, and he raises. Now, the issue here is that we don't expect him to have many flushes, and most of his not flushes are going to play by by calling. Uh, also, we block a few flushes. Um, so. I think, given the strength of our range at this point, it's probably a little bit too weak to fold to fold here. Given he's polarized, we don't we don't we don't we don't really need to be, we don't really need to worry about being beaten by King X. He, he might possibly raise King Six here, but I think most fifty NL players won't. Um, so I think this is probably a good hand to defend against a, against a turn raise. Um, we we have some some equity when behind. I think we're, on, we're almost always going to be happy to check core on heart rivers. Um, he isn't repping very wide range at all, and um, he, he he doesn't have many ace. Well, well, I, I suppose it's his draws are mostly the ace of hearts. Um, so so heart rivers aren't, aren't wonderful, but of course. We'd have to call them anyway, because we'd have the second knots. Um, sorry, I'm just just let me check my notes for a second. I think I've essentially mentioned ev mentioned everything, which explains the turn call. So we do call the turn. Uh, it, it's so close to the top of our range here. From, from a balance perspective, we really can't fold, and the rivers are blank, which you'd probably expect. So it's, it would be. It makes it, it's the hand is more interesting when it is. As we check the river, and villain bets nearly a hundred big blinds. I think from from a GCO perspective, this this would have to be a call. We have a very relevant blocker, and most of villain's bluffs are going to block the only better blocker which we can possibly have, the Ace of Hearts. So, effectively, against his, against his betting range, 
this is close to the best hand in our range to call with. Um, I mean, possi I mean, possibly Kings we is is slightly better because he he has pocket sixes in his range, um, and so we beat some of his uh, some of his value hands there. Um, the however, I think that this is an important point to to uh, to stop and think and. I think Karis has did a video on this recently, yeah, actually. At, at the micro stakes, you really don't need to call um, unexplosively in, in lots of spots, especially on common spots, because you're simply not going to be exploited. People aren't, aren't going to take meticulous notes on you in, in, a, in a pool of players that's round the clock is about 10,000 players. They're not, they're not good enough to exploit you anyway, and even if they were... You're going to come up against this spot against it, this type of spot in this, against this player in often enough to for it to make a hundredth of a big blind of a difference to your win rate when he's at the table. So fundamentally, I, I think I think we can get away with making throws to fold because we expect his range to be weighted towards value hands. People simply don't fire a hundred big blind bluffs enough in, in in enough of these limits, or at least enough according to game theory. Uh, so. Although I think this would probably be a call against very competent opposition or against uh, people who are extremely concerned with balance, I think I think I know one 50 NL Zoom player who is going to be roughly balanced in this spot. And he's beating the limit for more than anyone else as far as I know. Um, I think that I think this can be a fault. In 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 game, I, I decided I decided to call because I wasn't really thinking clearly. My I time banks down, and I ended up thinking our uh, best hand in my range to call with. And of course, he shows up with pocket sixes, which I th I think he played the hand reasonably. We don't we don't have enough flushes on the turn for him not to have a valid value raise. Um, and of course, he doesn't he doesn't really want to bet the flop with no equity when we mostly have a condensed range for checking. So. I think the main point to take from that hand is to remember when you want to apply balanced or GCO concepts. Uh, the next hand we have 8-7 off in the big blind. It's, it's folded to the button who's fairly nissy. Um, and he seems pretty bad. He's see betting 91% over a small sample. And the small blind calls, and it's a pretty easy call, three way, guessing 5-1. to one. We flop bottom pair. We don't we don't know much about the small blind, but he seems fairly reckish. I think he was playing four tables, so I so I think we can assume he's he's more likely to be reckish than anything else. And we check to the to the button. He see bets half pot. I expect this to mostly indicate a pretty weak range. People still have all sorts of awful sizing tells, and to be honest, he should be betting uh, significantly bigger with all, with all of his range with all of his of his betting range on this board. The small blind raises, and this is just a small point. I think three betting is the best play here. Uh, we have a block. We have a blocker to bottom sets, and more, most importantly, small blind against bottom. We expect a small blind to three bet kings, kings and nines. We re represent an extreme, an extremely strong range by three betting, um, and we don't expect them to ever really def defend by calling that much at all, either player. So the fact that we have very little equity uh, against calling ranges, which are essentially two pair plus, if that's I think King Nine is in a very tough spot if um, against this, it, it probably peels once. Uh, we're sorry. Um, we have an extremely profitable bluff. There, we, we expect this to be essentially one one combo in a small blinds range, which which can uh, continue. And plus, well, one combo plus three of king nine suited. Though I don't think he flat so it's pre. Um, and basically none in the in the bottom's range based on his c bet sizing. Though sometimes you might see somebody do this with kings. And if 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 you get called by by the button, you just check fold and turn 100 percent of the time. However, I still think we expect to get a fold um, roughly 95 percent of the time here. Because Jack's ten of hearts even really 
well, I, I think Jack Zenovarix possibly has to continue, but m many of his slot shows lose their appeal when facing a three-bat against what looks like a set, at least, and he, he can definitely be bluffing much wider than that as well in this spot, given positions. So we three-bet, and we get two folds. And the real point of that hand is just to point, is just to say, look for, look for spots where you block stuff, and thus ranges are weak. And you can often get extremely profitable bluffs in that spot. I think, I think with regards to sizing, um, thirteen fifty, I raised it to. I think that's roughly, that's that's about right. Um, I think uh, this is also a, this is also a flop on which we do on which we will want to three best our sets. Um, it's a little bit too wet to want to cold call them, and especially with the button sizing, we don't expect them to uh, continue that often anyway against a check raise. And and another point about the small uh, flop sizing from the button is that um, the small blind can possibly be check raising wider to try and exploit a likely weak range. So here we have here we have five three suits in a small blind. Um, standard open. We get three bet by a fairly aggressive three better. Uh, over over a small sample he's three betting ten percent overall, although that's close to irrelevant. I'd, 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 I'd say that tends to the population mean. I'll do a video explaining populations later. I've said that twice now, but it's really something you need to understand. And folding here is fine. However, I think four betting is, is probably better, especially the steep. The hand is very playable post-flop. Post We're going to want to flat a lot of other stuff this um this steep so we do we're probably going to want to flat 10 9 suited we're probably going to want to flat ace jack suited um and pretty much anything most most of our playable stuff we're going to want to flat so this is close to the top of our folding range which is playable and especially considering we, we expect them to be, to be flatting a fair amount of four bets in position blind versus blind and and this deep i think it's a good hand to choose to like to four bet with from a balanced perspective we also we also have we also introduce some decent board coverage in, into our four-betting range. Um, and the reason why this is important is that not only does it uh, ensure that we connect well with most flops, um, it's, which, is, which is nice, but in a four-bet in in four pot, to be honest, having aces in your range is often enough to do that. But... The other key point is that if your four betting range is aces kings, ace king, and ace deuce to ace five suited, which is a reasonably okay four betting range, when you four bet and the flop is ace high, the bottom of your range is kings, and you're going to struggle to get value much at all in that case um you're also essentially going to want to bluff kings if you want to, if you want to have a betting range on that flop so we four bet to 11 uh slightly bigger than normal normally i'd make it uh probably 10 50. so just it's just a big blind deep bigger than normal because it's slightly deep and he flats flop uh we flop uh backdoor straight and, and and flush draws, and I think it's, an, it's a fine flop to see bets. We're not going to have that much in our range, which which wants to which wants to see about this flop. Um, which wants to see about this flop as a bluff. We possibly have king queen off, uh, but we probably flat um, ace queen pre ace king. We have which might want to see about this flop as a bluff, but check calling it and is also perfectly legitimate here. So I think considering we do want a value betting range here, we probably have jacks and tens in our range. Uh, possibly not tens. Um, it's a good. It's it's a good spot to use this hand. Use this hand as a bluff. And because we're in because we're in a four bet pot, we want to size fairly small. Um, the reason why we size small when we get stacks in by the river anyway is that it forces our opponent to have an extremely wide calling range on each street, um, which in a lot of cases is going to cause them to make significant mistakes. So if you if you bet a third pot and your opponent folds to forty five percent of C bets, which is a fairly standard number, 
you're going to print money in that spot um, because you need they need to fold uh, rough, uh, they need to fold 25 uh, less than 25 percent of the time if you not show an immediate profit so we bet uh, fairly standard sizing it's slightly bigger than normal for a four bet pot because the texture is fairly wet so normally I'd go for about 750 but um, I think it's fine and the sun's interesting because it's very tough for us to, to have bluffs in this spot. This is basically the, un, the, the only hand we can use uh, to borrow the bluff. Um, so, for instance, we might have queen nine suited, which we want to bluff with, but basically all of our all of our flop betting range is now not so close to it. So our range is extremely polarised. We have aces, we probably have king-queen, villain also has king-queen, uh, we, we should note. Um, and, it's, and and lots of our, uh, lots of our hands that we might choose to bluff with on a flop, ace-king if we choose to bluff with that, have become reasonable showdown value. Um, so, Considering we have very few, very few hands we can bluff with, we, we might have some other rando suited one gappers um, or or low suited connectors like like six five suited. This is actually one of the best hands to continue bluffing with on this turn. And I think we I, I think considering we have prob we have aces certainly in our opponent doesn't and we poss and our opponent possibly just doesn't have jacks and we possibly have jacks. Though I'm not sure about a specific op optimal strategy with Jackson, it's flop. Um, I think our range is, is slightly stronger than our opponents on on this turn, so we're going to, so we're going to want to continue betting. Um, so that's the reason for the turn bets. I think I think that sizing is possibly a bit too big because it doesn't leave much behind on the river. We're going to have 42 into 71. Um, which means our opponents is going to we're not going to be able to have many bluffs in our river range although i'm not sure that's too much of a problem given given the strength of our, of our turn betting range here um no in fact i think the sizing is fine um i think i think if if it was an alternative turn on which we were still going to have plenty of bluffs by the river um on lots of rivers Say for instance the six six of diamonds, we'd want to bet closer to twelve dollars just so we can shove river for say forty forty six and sixty three, which is a lot more significant relative to the pot. And villain calls, and th and at this point we expect him to have a lot of reasonably strong hands. Possibly he has at least jack x plus his entire range. Um. Maybe he has nine eight suited, but I'm not sure. Um, the thing is, a lot a lot of opponents are going to make the mistake of shoving king queen on this turn. So so against the population, we can remove a lot of king queen combos from their range. We also still have the relatively stronger range, and so we can get hands as strong as two pairs to fold. I think on on rivers at, at some stage. So. Um, because of that, I think the river is a fairly good shove, um, and this this is a point that I need to quickly make. The five is not showdown value. A lot a, a, a lot of people river bottom pair and think yippee, I have showdown value. It's really it's really not. If you're still behind a hundred percent of your opponent's range. You don't have a showdown value. I mean, I mentioned nine eight suits on the turn, which which our opponent could still have, but most of the time he's shoving that if we check anyway. So, so and obviously we can't call with five three here. Um, and from a balance perspective, again, although I don't I don't think that's particularly valuable in this spot considering how rare the spot is, uh, and how incapable our opponents are like to be of of adjusting pro appropriately. This is clearly shove. Um, we have close to the nut bottom of our range. Possibly we have 
like some King Nine suicide. I don't know, but st but still, it's clearly a shove. If we have Queen Nine suited, that's all. That's a better shove because we block King Queen. Um, but yeah, we could fold. If I've got. I, I've I've gone through. If 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 we expect him to fold, I think we need we need him to fold Jack Ten and stronger for it to be a, profit, a profitable shove. Jack Ten and weaker rather, and I think it's very unlikely that he's not going to fold Jack Ten in this spot because we rep such a strong range by four betting and bet bet jamming. As I mentioned in, in the last hand. 50 NL players are very rarely going to bluff jam uh, large amounts. Eight, eight to five big blinds, for instance. You're not you're not going to see people firing bluffs at large very often. So we shove the river and villain folds. And I, th I think this is interesting. Um, this, is an, this is an interesting hand in terms of range construction, mainly. Um, you have to consider which hands are best to bluff within your range. And... And, and and also consider how many bluffs you have in your range in lots of spots, and that's also useful for, for bet sizing, uh, for reasons I've mentioned in a couple of my videos already. Well, my two videos already, I think. So, here we have Queens again. Fold is a small blind. He min raises, which is absolutely awful. I think that if you're min raising small blinds, you need to change that, uh, un unless the big blind is folding far too much, which... I don't. I don't think you should think about me as. That's about me at all. The reason being that you allow your opponent to profitably defend any two cards, either by either by calling or three betting, and it's going to put. It's going to make. It's going to make it, it very tough for you to play post flop, considering you still have a relatively wide range. I'd submit that if you're raising less than forty percent in the small blind, you're likely too tight. Um, and, and although you might be able to expect to turn a small profit post flop given, given how wide the big blinds range is, um, you're giving up too much preflop pre -flop equity by never being able to steal. Um, and also, the rake takes more of an effect as a result. But here, if, um, Queens, is, Queens is an obvious 3-bet because he's raised slightly smaller than usual, I'm 3-betting over 3x, and he calls. Flop is 6-6-3, uh, 2 tone rather. Um, we expect him to hit his flop close to never. He has possibly, possibly some. He has like tens through eights, possibly sevens, which which hit his flop, hit his flop, or hit in inverted commas his flop. Um, he has some diamond draws, although we have the queen, the queen of diamonds blocker. Although that's not especially is especially important. There's basically only eight queen, king, queen of diamonds, which he has pre, which have the queen of diamonds in them. And have have a plus draw on his on his flop. Um, so his range is, is really tough. Is really weak on his flop. And because of that, we want to bet relatively small. We want to, we want to force him to defend a percentage of his range he's, un he's uncomfortable with. So we bet half pot, which forces him to defend at least two thirds of his range, and almost certainly more because our bluffs are still going to, uh, still going to have a, 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 sorry, our bluffs are still going to have equity. Uh, so I think if he's folding more than, let's say, 25% on this flop, he's making a mistake. So he check calls. Although although it, sh it should be noted that given that there are some flops that are inherently favourable to certain ranges, then he could just accept that he's not going to be able to defend enough on his, on his texture. And the seven, the seven of spades turn card. Um, it strengthens some of his range. It also strengthens some of ours because both players have had plenty of backdoor spade combos on a flop. Um, it doesn't really give him any more made hands. Possibly if he has a a seven in diamonds, uh, pocket sevens, but that's very few combos relative to his range. Um, However, his range is strengthened by the fact that he's going to fold a, reason, a reasonable amount on a flop. So he can, so can bet a bit bigger on his turn. Um, I think about 850 is probably correct, because we still want to force him to defend a little bit wider than he's comfortable with. But uh, we um, don't want to... Um, 
miss value from a lot from, from lots of jaws, which I think I, I think the two are competing concepts and the the reason why uh why the both can coexist is that the former um wanting to wanting to support him is to defend more than he's comfortable with is thinking about um the way you gain expected value with your range so um clearly if somebody can't defend as wide as they need to uh then then you have a very profitable bluff um but the alternative concepts um getting value from jaws which is which is probably one of the first things anyone learns is something specific to your actual whole actual holding so for instance with queens here um if if we wanted to get more more value from his draws, you'd bet something like seventy percent bottom of the flop. <clears throat> because this way we're very unlikely to get stacks in by the river. Um here as as I mentioned I think eight fifty is the is the appropriate bet size on a turn. Uh, I think this is too small. Um possibly nine possibly nine dollars. Um I think any any bigger is starting to polarise the range too much considering we don't have the nuts in our range and villain does. Um given that, that we're flatting okay we might we might have six three suited actually pre flop. Um I think that pro probably plays better pre flop as a three better than a flat. But I still think villain has more nut nutted combos than we do. Um but our range is fundamentally it's fun. It's so much. It's fundamentally so much stronger. Apart from these very few isolated knotted combos that we, that we can still bet. Um, so villain calls a turn here. We expect him to have. If he's calling wide enough, he has. He, I think I worked this out, and he, and he still has had some king queen uh, with with no draw combos in his range. But I, I think here we can expect him to have strong ace high. Ace high at worst. <coughs> and an offsuit four comes on a river. Every realistic draw miss miss. Um, he there, there's a very small chance he had five four suited pre, but that, that's already hit the turn. And there are basically no no other five x in his range. Maybe it's a maze five suited. Um, so not a value betting this river will be a travesty. Considering all the draws missed, his range is extremely weak. Um. He probably has more more draws in his range than we do, because we're mostly flatting um, mid 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 range to Nexus pre, and the hands which we would three bet pre, which would flop or turn draws, are things which we'd want to check back for showdown value. So, for instance, Ace Queen, Ace Queen, Ace King, Ace Queen of Diamonds, um, or that would smash the board anyway. So, for instance. We we could possibly have like seven four of diamonds pre, but we'd probably check the turn with that. Um, so we, we don't really have any missed draws. So because of that, because his range is extremely weak, we want again to force him to defend much wider than he's comfortable with. Um, because the the alternative would would be over betting. Uh, because we want to force him to call some of his range, but but the issue with that is that he still has the nuts in his range. He still probably has pocket pocket sevens here, um, and so because his range is uncapped, we shouldn't be overbetting. Um, I will do a video on overbetting at some stage. It's a useful concept to get. So I think about twelve dollars is best here, just essentially to force him to call with all of his all of his ace highs. Um, or at least from a balanced perspective, from GCR's perspective, we want to force him to score all of his ace highs. I don't think he should, when we bet, okay, 12.50, I don't think he should, he should actually call with ace high, just because um, we're probably not triple barreling this run out often enough as as uh, the population we're perceived to fit. So we're perceived probably as a, as a reggish 20.50 and unknown. Uh, we're, we're probably barreling triple triple barring like right now some king queen stuff <coughs> um and that's it so i, th I think you should fold um and that's the other reason why best why betting small is good 
we have very few bluffs in our range. And although if we assume perfect polarization, which is obviously not a great, not the perfect assumption to make, because it's wrong. Uh, our range isn't perfectly polarized, for and doesn't always have a bluff catcher. But it makes everything so much easier, and it's easy to spawn a model on. Um, then, although our, our, our expectation, if we assume we have uh, enough enough value hands enough value hands relative to bluffs in our range before we decide, take deciding whether to bet or check that we can bet all our bluffs and remain balanced without shoving our our expectation doesn't increase from between betting the minimum and maximum optimum size so our expectation is still pot with our range in this case between betting say i don't know let's say that we can bet all our bluffs if we bet a third pots um our expectation doesn't change between betting a third part and shoving. It's pot either way, assuming villain is calling unexplosively. But the thing is that it, that if we bet on this borderline, then it, we force villain to have a calling range, and that makes it so much easier for him to make mistakes. If we bet an amount which he can, which he can uh, just fold everything to, then he's it's, it's going to be very tough for him to make mistakes. So. We so we 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 bet 1250 and he ends up calling with ace queen high, which I think fundamentally it is probably a bad call, but it's not terrible. Um, it's it's only a bad call because I think it's a spot where where he can make an exploit to fold really. So obviously we ship the pot. Um, well. Well, this is taking a little bit longer than I expected. Um, next hand, we have Queen Jack off. We Queen Jack sees in the cut off stand, standard open, um, and get flattered by the big blind, who see, who's an aggressive regular. Uh, he, we think he's probably three betting. Um, we don't, we don't really know it's only three bet range. So we think he's probably three betting, like uh, a lot of hands, a lot of ace axes at hands, possibly, unless he flats him. Um, some flat, some three, but those hands here. He's probably flashing through betting a lot of suited connector hands or suited gapper hands. So really, I, th I think his flatting range is likely mostly broadways and pairs, um, with some suited connectors, some other crap I haven't mentioned. But yeah, um, so he checks a flop. Uh, there's an argument for checking back this flop because it because this is a board on which our checking back range is going to be inherently pretty weak. So he wants to. So we want to protect it, but I think considering given over, considering over the sample he's been folding to eighteen percent of C bets, I think he, even if we did establish that this should be a check from a, from a balance perspective, and I think that's in, in no way necessary. That's I've no way necessarily established that. Um, I think we should bet this explosively anyway. So we make a, a C bet, and I, I think this is a little bit too small. I think two fifty is probably better considering how wet the texture is. And villain calls. We expect him to check raise sets on a flop, um, sets plus uh, two pair plus basically on a flop. Possibly ace jack, though not always ace jack. I think check calling ace jack is best from his spot. Um, and so I think a lot of, and we expect him to check raise draws a lot of them, a lot of them anyway. So I think his range contains a lot of. Um, King Queen type hands, which ha which actually have some showdown value against our C betting range, some nine x, some jack x, uh, possibly sevens, eights, tens, and some ace high hands. And again, again, it's our range. We can probably value better turn, and I did indeed better turn, but I think that's a mistake. Uh, the reason being that the bet itself is very thin. Um, his likely calling range was slightly ahead of it. And I'm not going to pull up the analysis now, um, because I'm more talking in terms of general principles here. I mean, I, I may do a video in, in which I do in which I do full analysis, but I think it's more useful to people to learn principles and and unless they don't know how to do the off-table work already. Um, but, but tell me if you, if you have if you disagree about that, and I could change. Um, the the issue is that if we bet this, we have nothing in our checking range. 
which is worth anything. And because there is no better reason to use ASEX, there is no reason why ASEX would, would be better for protecting our checking range than, than Jack X and his spots. Um, I, I mean, the only real thing is here we're vulnerable to King Rivers if he has some random King X, King Queen, King Ten, maybe. Um, but that's a very minor point. And we've got to remember that, that ASEX is so much better for, for betting for value in this spot because we can get calls from, from, Jacks and be, from Jack X and be happy. Um, so yeah, if 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 we if we bet here, our checking range is is like um, we probably don't see about nine nine x here, possibly nine eight. Um, our checking range is, is extremely weak, and and he can just bet and bet rivers with any Mister or when we check and feel and essentially make a lot of money off us. So we bet, and I think that's a mistake. Yeah, um, okay, this will, this will probably be the last hand I talk about in this in this video, uh, but I will do another one uh, covering the rest. Ace King off standard open, and we get called we get called by a, a sort of weak knit in the, on the button, and I think his flop is close between the, between the check and the bet. I think he he is likely fine. Um, I think if we had Ace King of clubs, both clubs. I think checking is better. Uh, I mentioned earlier the reasons why we want to have some sh some flush draws in in our in our in our checking range a lot of the time. But I think backdoor flush draws, especially backdoor not flush draws, we gain so much from being able to borrow them that I think it, it presents a strong argument for sea besting them, even when they do have pretty decent showdown value. Um, and also we have two other cards here, which we're pretty happy with. Um, so yeah, um, the argument for checking is pretty obvious. Where we we have shared odd value and and we can check all a couple of streets here pretty happily. Sorry, bet villain calls and the turn is the king of clubs. Um, the trouble with betting this turn is a that villain's range is actually pretty strong in this spot. Um, a lot of his a lot of his flop draws got there. He has like Queen Jack, Queen Ten, um, and also some seven six suited, some some eight seven suited, and uh, and but but the thing is, we also block backdoor clubs, backdoor club draws. Um, he can have some Jack Ten, I guess, but um, that's pretty much the only thing which which uh, apart from the flop gut shots, which remains a, a pure bluff, <clears throat> um, and. But um, also, checking has merits in that um, we protect our checking range. Although I think that's pretty. Cl I th I think again, this is a spot where we can check all bets really and not be too miffed about either decision. The, the thing I was. The thing I was thinking about at the time in, in the seventh check is is more um, having having clubs in our range. Uh, but considering we already have we we already have flushes in our range, I, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, so yeah, you you can make a thin value bet, or or you can check. Um, and really, I I think he is likely fine. If you check, you're calling down, um, and. I, su I suppose that's the argument for how, for check calling this, that you can have this hand which can check call this turn and basically any river. I think I think precisely any river this hand can call, um, as, a, as opposed to your queen jack type hands which aren't so happy with with calling um, some with, with calling some rivers, uh, an ace river for instance. Although I guess you also have ace queen there. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's a spot where checking or betting is fine. Uh, we check call against a fairly small bet. Um, I think his bet sizing is fine. I, I think his bet sizing is like likely fine. Um, though perhaps I would have liked to, to have seen a, a significantly bigger bet um, with all of his range, really, because 
his passing range is, is really strong and is, and is basically ahead of our, the entirety of our checking range. All, apart from maybe King King Jack with apart from maybe King Jack. And then we check the river and he checks back with eight six of spades, which is a fairly loose which is I think too loose pre. Um I don't think you can call that pre. And expect and expect to make a profit give, given the amount of rake at the at this limit. Um but I think he played a hand fine post flop. Although one could argue for a turn check and a river bluff, given that he has very little uh, very little equity on a turn, he basically has three semi clean outs. Um and and there's going to be some Queen X in his range which he, which he wants to check turn better river with. Either way that's um either way that that's a moot point. And because because we're a, a because we're forty five minutes in and b because I'm starting to get really thirsty, you probably heard my voice crack, cr cracking a bit. Point point there. Um, we're going we're going to end this first video here. I'm about to record a second video with hopefully the with the remainder of the hands. But um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this first part. The second part I think should be coming out in a week, possibly two, a week and a half, something like that. Anyway, thanks. I've been the definite article for Grandy School.